Hello and welcome to Interviews with Tej. I'm your host, Tej TV, and I just want to say I am thrilled to have you here today with me and myself. We've got a lot of great things planned, but first on the docket is someone that you probably know, you're probably a fan of, you might even be subscribed to him on Twitch and or YouTube. He's been working on this feature for a long time, and it's been just great to finally see it released. Let's welcome to the stage, TJ DeVries. <laughs> Come on over. Oh man, TJ, you are too kind. You're too kind. I'm, to be honest, I'm honored to be here with you, such a great interviewer. And beyond that, I mean, so many people out here in the audience. Prime, you're looking great with that stash, my man, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Anyways, thanks for having me. I think we should get on talking with the feature. Let's go. Welcome, TJ, and I'm so glad to have you. First things first, what are your initial thoughts on Lua Auto Commands? Yeah, I think this feature, as well as some of the other ones that we have in this release, are really starting to shave off those last few parts of the config or parts of your plugin that you had to either have weird workarounds for or go back into VimScript land. With the sort of advent of these Lua auto commands, you're able to pass directly into the auto command API Lua closures, which is really exciting for one-off or nested auto commands or the ability to just sort of simplify your exported interface, right? In the past, you either had to make a global Lua function or you had to do something like export out this in some module and then you weren't always happy with that because people might end up using that code even though you didn't want them to. So I think that this aspect makes it really great. But on the other side of it too, I think what's cool is we're removing some of these necessities of understanding weird DSLs within VimScript. And by that, what I mean is before you had to sort of know magically what order each of the special keywords would happen in an auto command, where you were allowed to put nested or patterns or things like that, right? And that ended up, creating, I think, a lot of friction for people who were new to Vim or NeoVim and weren't able to decide, oh yeah, I want to go take my plugin to the next level. I want to use auto commands or I want to add my own auto commands in my config. And those things really prevented those users from taking that next step in that journey, right? Every time we have one more of those roadblocks, I think it makes it a little bit tough for someone to continue to want to go on, right? And I don't think they're having as much fun when they're doing that. So moving from sort of this DSL string-based pattern creation of auto commands into this structured style, I think also helps people beyond just the ability to pass Lua closures directly. Wait, so are you saying that the improvements here for Lua auto commands don't just apply to Lua explicitly? It was at this moment that I realized this guy is a pretty sharp interviewer. <laughs> Wow, pick up on something like that. You know, that's a great question. One of the exciting aspects about this structured approach, right, is that it doesn't only help people that are writing the Lua or Vim script directly inside of plugins, but if you're doing things over remote plugins or through GUIs even, right, because GUIs are just another type of plugin for NeoVim, you're able to now, instead of sort of string interpolate and smash a bunch of stuff into one big string, you can actually keep them in the structured format. And I think that will really also improve the ergonomics across different APIs. I think one of the things that excites me about what we're doing here is creating more structured formats and more common and I would say sort of like repeated patterns, right? Understandable ideas, common names, all of these things reduce those frictions one step at a time. And I, I think that that will help plugin authors, users, even remote library authors, right? To be able to do these things more easily without having to know a bunch of oddities about the VimScript DSL. Yeah, all of that sounds amazing. I mean, it must have been quite the long journey to get to where we are. Yeah, it does sort of feel like long journey is a bit of an understatement, right? I think this was definitely the longest feature that I ever worked on for NeoVim Core. And the reason for that is because my goal wasn't just to sort of shove the ability to put Lua auto commands into NeoVim. 
right? What I wanted to do was sort of transform the way that auto commands are interacted with by the users. I wanted structured, I wanted easy keyword arguments, I wanted to be able to programmatically do this without a bunch of string interpolation, sort of all of the things that I've been saying really decrease the frictions of auto commands. I wanted to be able to provide those. But the difficulty was, and I'm sure for many of you who know who are familiar with Vim and NeoVim, is that auto commands are everywhere. The way that you determine what file type something is, whether you want to run something on save, when something text changes and you want to run something, all of those things rely on auto commands. And there is a lot of code <laughs> relating to those things, right? And there's a lot of edge cases and special things and certain auto commands don't act exactly the same as other auto commands. And so it was a long time figuring out, oh, we messed up this one thing or we did that. It was really great to have just a huge test suite to run against and to add some tests that maybe didn't have the same coverage and to be able to really feel confident that we had ended up creating the same experience that Vim and NeoVim users had expected before, even though a lot of things underneath the hood might be different. Just one simple example is now when you create an auto command through the API, you actually get returned an ID. This ID uniquely identifies any auto commands that were created by the combination of the pattern and callback and group, et cetera, all those things within this one particular call. What this lets you do is instead of sort of having to either keep some global check that you've run this or that you run it a certain amount of times or use nested, you're actually able to, upon a certain event, basically deregister or delete these auto commands from NeoVim by the ID, which I think is really exciting. So we're sort of creating more ways for people to interact with this and really simplify what plugin authors and users need to do to control auto commands in a way that you'd be able to expect. How did you stay motivated through this entire time of this PR? Yeah, I think surprisingly, and I'm not kidding, just because we're on Twitch, I'm not just saying this because we're on Twitch, a, a lot of the reason that I was able to sort of keep pushing through this PR and working on it was through streaming and through YouTube and stuff. People were just excited to see the progress of what was happening. They were there to hang out or help me when I was getting stuck or, uh, you know, sometimes when I was maybe just a little bit frustrated. And through that experience, I think it was actually kind of fun because the community helped push me through to get this feature done when maybe I would have uh, <laughs> I would have stalled out or stopped or started working on something that would have been a little bit you know more rewarding in that time. Now that I finished the feature, I'm super pumped about it and I'm super happy that that I did it and we got it done. But I, I think throughout the time that I was doing it, right, sometimes it felt a little bit difficult to actually have the motivation to, to finish the feature. So I want to give a big shout out to, to Twitch and everybody who was here and who was there along the way. And yeah, I, I think surprisingly, Twitch was one of the reasons that we have Lua Auto Commands today. And, you know, I think maybe Twitch did sort of sneak in a little bit <laughs> to... Uh, to the PR at some points. Wait, wait, wait. They snuck into the PR. Yeah, I think the way that that kind of happened was primarily we were trying to replicate what actually happens when you delete certain combinations of patterns and groups and events all at the same time. And I was frustrated by the legacy behavior there. So I ended up adding a new, <laughs> I ended up adding uh, a new parameter B. Friedel was the one who merged it. So, B. Friedel, if you're here today, this one's on you, right? Uh, we added a new parameter that was called is stupid legacy mode. That does feel a little bit like Twitch chat chose the name. So, what are you going to do? So, it did sneak in a little bit. It's been officially committed. It's in history forever. You can't do anything about it. But uh, <laughs> I think that was one of the ways sort of that it was fun and interactive that we were doing those things. And... I ended up leaving a comment that explained the situation, so I think we're I think we're safe. I think we're safe. Okay, sure, sure. Thanking Twitch chat, but there's got to be some other people you want to thank about it as as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to just only thank Twitch chat. Actually, what was really cool as well, and I think at least made me feel like I wasn't too far off with some things, was actually that after we merged the PR, 
there were several other contributors who sort of took things and shaved off some of the other rough corners with it, which I think is great. One of the exciting things about not having just this rolling release, but instead having actual versions that we're releasing is that we were able to change some of the names or formalize a few more things or make it all exactly the same between different functions. Uh, things that we just didn't catch in that first round of PR review that we caught after a few hundred more people tested it out, right? So I want to thank the other people who contributed and added more docs or more tests or other fixes because I think that really helps us get to the point where when we do this release, we feel really confident that auto commands is in a really safe state that we're able to ship. So I want to thank the rest of the Neovim contributors who did that and it really made the feature great. And it's cool to see other people taking ownership and working on it as well. So that's not just sort of bottlenecked with just me being the only person able to understand or work with that code, which is a little bit how the situation felt uh, before we did some of the refactors. So that was really exciting. I mean, even if you were the bottleneck, sometimes it feels like you're two X devs. <laughs> But with that, I want to get moving on towards our next interviews. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, I, I'm super excited for those other interviews too. Bef before we go, and I, I hope this isn't weird, but I really felt like we had a connection in this interview. And I want to thank you for doing such a good job. I feel just honored and privileged to have this experience together with you. And because of that, I, I just want to remind chat really quickly. If you have Amazon Prime, you can give this man your free Prime Gaming subscription. And if not, and you just love the kind of content that he is out there producing for you, feel free to give him give him a sub, you know, throw it, throw it his way. You never know. You'll get some cool emotes. You'll get to join the special role on his brand new Discord server. Lots of really cool benefits for that. So I just wanted, I just wanted to say that, okay? I just wanted to say that. I know you weren't going to do it, so I felt like I had to do it. With that, I, that's, that's all I have to say. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. I'll, I'll see you all later. And with that, I'll get out of here and let you close. Well, and with that, that concludes interviews with TJ. I hope you enjoyed this little conversation between me and myself. And I hope you learned a little bit more as well about Lua Auto Commands. I want to get right on over to our next talks. So let's do that. I will see you all later. Bye, everybody.